Okay, guys, it's Friday. Friday, Adult Beverage Friday. And I had my share of adult beverages today. And of course, we have to celebrate because uh, this channel has reached 30,000 subscribers as of today. Actually, we're past that now. So this is, uh, this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. And let me just uh, say hello to the people here. Eddie Ordaz, Sweet Lord, Milo, El Capitan, Alvaro, Augustin, Haro, Matt Freeman, Circle of Ravens, Alvaro, uh, James Mason, what did I miss in the top here? Praveen Kumar, uh, welcome guys, welcome, and thank you for all the comments that you were leaving uh, before the broadcast. And by the way, if you like the broadcast, make sure to hit the like button so that the algorithm knows that they should promote this video. That's how it works, guys. That's how it works. So again, thank you. We have uh, quite a bit of a milestone. It's a big milestone for me. I don't know why, but to me, the number 30,000 has always been a big deal. And maybe because it's because I'm looking at some of the other the other uh, cybersecurity type channels. And it seems like, you know, I was looking at them in the past, like, you know, over a year ago or a couple of years ago, and they seem to be like, you know, they seem so legit at 30,000 subscribers. And I'm, um, you know, I'm happy to say that uh, we're there. So maybe now I'm legit. Now you can kind of listen to me now and pay attention. So actually, I do have 30,000 subscribers already on Periscope. I did that before I went to YouTube and I've only been on YouTube for a year and a half really. I had an inactive account before that and um, and uh, mostly paid attention to Periscope, Twitter, which was my platform before. So uh, now I'm 100% YouTube and on Library, which is a clone of my broadcast on YouTube. So whatever you see on Library is what I do on YouTube. So in library, strangely enough, I only started library, what, th uh, three months ago or so? And I already have 13,000 followers on library, 13,000. That's uh, uh, close to half of YouTube in three months. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty impressive. So so thank you for those on that platform and maybe the the target market in that platform matches what i do and i i really am am shocked that i got so many followers on library i'm now in the top third and i actually publish my videos ahead on library but i do not publish my uh live streams on library because it's not automatic so i guess it, it requires some special thing to, to, to upload it there. So in any case, uh, uh, this is this is a big milestone. There, there were some uh, channels I followed that are now similar to me in, uh, in uh, subscriber count. One of the one of the ones I sub I've been subscribed to for many, many years was Security Now with Steve, Leo Laporte and Steve Gibson. And uh, and now you know, now I'm at uh, uh, almost uh, pretty close to them in number, and obviously my traffic is much is much more. So this is uh, this uh, means that somehow people are getting my message because a lot of cybersecurity channels on YouTube focus on cybersecurity, and I'm really the only one that specifically focuses on privacy tech so there's a lot of tech channels but not any of them really have as narrow a focus as mine mine is you know specifically privacy tech and being a, a, a growing channel I'm now getting a lot of you know people saying oh please review my product I get a lot of that you know almost every day and uh, and I've been you know kind of uh, if you notice, I don't really uh, do a lot of promotion of different products, just a select few, because they have to be compatible to what I do, which is privacy. So if somebody comes in there and says, oh, oh, why don't you promote this, uh, you know, 
uh, Alexa Echo type of device. And it's like, suck. Hell no. Why don't you promote, you know, this security camera that will spy on you? Uh, Zuck, no. So, so yeah, I, it's, it's uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to uh, take a sponsor that is not, I'm not a shill. So the sponsors will have to deal with what we deal with, which is uh, very specifically this very, very targeted approach, which is privacy. And, and it worked for me, so I'm going to keep doing it. A lot of my videos on privacy don't get a lot of views. I know a lot of, you know, a lot of you want to hear me talk about phones and uh, which is you know fonts isn't the only thing about life that you need to worry about you know uh, privacy issues are everywhere so you, we need to think about think about everyone don't talk about that huge debate i'm i'm not i'm not a follower of the, of uh, of that uh, channel i don't think i'm even subscribed to that channel so you know the things that are promoted there is not necessarily compatible with what I promote, even though that's also a a um, privacy oriented channel. But some of the logic there is not consistent with mine because, you know, again, if you start to focus too much on marketing a product, then you start to take a side, and you're going to start recommending you know VPNs and so on that uh you know may may not be may not be good for privacy so i don't do that it's going to be very very selective so i you know as you guys know i have my own vpn it's called bytes vpn and uh, i've been making changes it's been growing and thanks to this channel it's you know i can't make money off the advertising from youtube youtube uh, pays me 500 bucks a month for for advertising and uh, none of us are going to live on that. So, uh, so uh, uh, I have Bytes VPN, and I'm happy to say that is growing. And I've expanded to Europe. I I've opened up servers in uh, uh, several servers in Europe, in Amsterdam and Paris, uh, which should serve most of Western Europe. And just uh, today, I opened up. Um, Sydney so Australia is now covered so so hopefully that will also be a hub for even New Zealand so we'll see as we get more in in those countries then I can expand the network more uh, because our followers in Australia are dealing with a com country that actually wants to be the leader in the five eyes they actually want to spy I don't know what they want to do Australia is, uh, is is turning into kind of a, you know, uh, someone was making a comment from Australia that was saying, oh, it's, uh, you know, they're turning Nazi. So the, the fact of the matter is that Australia is, uh, you know, they want to ban encryption for one. Uh, it's it's really been, uh, been uh, uh very anti-privacy you know they they really don't care about you they want to impose an idea and a belief and control what you see and that is true of both even new zealand and and uh the the uh, in in australia and let me just uh, you know before i get into the the main topic let me just uh, kind of rant for a small moment because i was having dinner and and uh, we were having a chat about uh, about uh, you know politics in general and and uh, what people don't understand about how you can be manipulated based on what you know and 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 it's this is something that is just a battle that I battle with every day because it's so hard to explain that there are companies and two companies that I can state out in the open but there are other companies that I don't state. Uh, and the two companies are Palantir and Jigsaw, and their uh, Palantir is is pro probably has a market cap. It's a private company, but you know they've been offered as much as a hundred mil, a hundred billion. Imagine a company being offered to be bought for a hundred billion. Okay, and you don't even know what this company does. You don't know what it does. So what? Why would you uh, think that somebody would want to buy Palantir 
for 100 billion and they don't even know what it does. The only thing that Palantir does is collect your data and manipulate it. Uh, Palantir is a little bit different because Pal Palantir and then Jigsaw, which is the Google owned uh, entity that is like Palantir, uh, what their job is is to get on the uh, uh, attacking front. They don't just take the data, they actually take the data and are turn into data mercenaries. They can actually use the data to manipulate information. So if you heard of, uh, maybe you heard of uh, Cambridge Analytica, maybe you didn't. Maybe you were hiding under a rock and you didn't understand that the guy who, uh, who actually shared the algorithm for Cambridge Analytica based on the captured social media data actually came from Palantir. The engineer that shared the algorithm for tracking and, uh, and creating personalities of people actually came from Palantir. So some of you say, well, we don't really care. I have nothing to hide. There's nothing and no, no, no value in my information. And you just don't understand terms like social media amplification. And just to, to just give you give you an idea of this, just to give you an idea of this, social media amplification, and you see this on Twitter all the time. Uh, somebody will post something. Iran is one of the biggest users. Uh, there was a guy uh, on Twitter that I followed and and on Periscope, uh, and he uh, he was kind of an expert at tracking this, which was uh, social media amplification from Iran. And what happens is they use bots. These are not real people. They have millions of fake accounts. Millions. Millions of fake accounts. So when they want to like push an idea, the millions of fake accounts uh, respond to a post and it will, it will then trend because somebody, you know, pushed it. And this can be the same in Facebook. So you got millions of fake accounts that can do this. And this is called social media amplification. So some of the things you see on social media, especially in politics and so on, uh, certain ideas and you think that you know these are organic ideas uh, and you don't even know which one of this has been caused by somebody trying to trigger a population and you know and this happens both on the left and the right so this is really that just bugs me because it's like why don't you just leave us alone let us make our own judgments instead of manipulating and and uh, and there are actually books on this that went all the way to, you know, World War I in the U.S. And apparently, you know, this is something that's been going on, this manipulation. And, and they have less chance of manipulation back in World War I. But now, because they actually have a profile of each person, they can actually target the market and say, okay, let's classify people based on their political belief and then let's change the message. And you say, well, I, I'm smart. I know what I'm seeing. And yeah, it's very easy. All you have to do is withhold information. So if I keep sending you the same kind of data and make you think that this is the 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 correct belief and there's nothing else and you don't see any, uh, any other opposing views, uh, you will actually believe that. And if somebody says, well, that doesn't sound right because of X or Y, you're not going to you're not going to accept it. And you don't think that this can be used for manipulation. And, and I told you this is an old story that I said, which how, how they did a war game where they actually uh, confused a, a military base by sending conflicting messages to social media and basically confused everyone in the base. And then it was a precursor to an attack and the base could not respond because they were not ready. So... You know, if you think that this is not done, Snowden revealed that they actually tested this in the UK. GCHQ actually uh, changed the internet for a population. I believe they were Muslim, and changed the internet to for this select few uh, with the intention of, uh, at least the goal was to uh, reduce radicalism by changing the message so when they go do search certain things are more more apt to come out versus what they were searching for the problem is this 
technique can be used on anyone for any purpose based on what somebody wants to manipulate you with. It, you know, you, you might think, oh, we don't want radicalism, so that's a good deal, but nothing stops you from doing it with anything else. And this is why I'm really, really concerned about this. And we shouldn't be sitting here taking all this and saying, we want them to take our data. Uh, we want to lose our privacy because we don't understand that they have the tools to manipulate us with companies like Palantir that can actually alter the internet and do pre-crime. They're actually doing pre-crime with the LA Police Department. So when I say they, they defunded, they defunded the LAPD by some several billion apparently. And uh, so the uh, community leaders are trying to explain that. But, you know, I hope they spend that defunding to defund Palantir. Okay? If they defund Palantir, I, I'm not going to have any problem with that. Okay? I, I may have a problem when there's no police in my neighborhood. But I'll, I don't have a problem if they say, Okay, I guess our budget is cut. We can't do this pre-crime by Palantir. Because they are actually using against people who weren't necessarily bad. They just happened to be in a bad neighborhood with, you know bad relatives or friends and uh, you know it, until you you commit a crime then you're not a criminal and that's not what this pre-crime believes in this pre-crime believes that if you've been profiled to be a criminal then you're gonna be one okay so very very distressing to me when anything like that occurs in any sort of uh, environment in for any type of uh, person in the community so anyway, uh, the, the first time live viewer, Fleet Lord uh, Atvar, Twitty. Thank you, Twitty. What up, Kenshin, Fish, uh, Fish RR34, Joe Lee Sad, uh, Double J, Filippi, Joe uh, Patrick D, uh, social media amplification with bots gets an entire new level with GPT-3 AI. Now, that's a very specific thing. I don't know what that is, but uh, uh, per Ciencia ad, ad Astra, Cosmic Rose. Hello, Cosmic Rose. Hello, Capitan. Uh, Whitey. Hello, Whitey. So, uh, um, hope I didn't miss comments here. And thank you, Twit. Thank you, Twitty. Thank you so much for the super chats thank you so much so anyway uh i don't know how to convince people that you know getting profiled with the you know this attitude of nothing to hide you know it's a false uh false argument and uh, we need to be concerned about being profiled i don't even care what your political belief is you need to think freely we Take a side, be on the left or on the right, often based on our life experience. And you know what? I respect that. I respect anyone who gets a different opinion because that's the way the world is. You know, you, you may have had uh, uh, an impoverished childhood and you tend to lean to, to one side of the political spectrum. Or you may be super rich and you lean to one side. And because of different life experiences, we we actually uh, follow different beliefs. But I'm... I'm uh, I'm a little different, and my, my belief is that you should be free to think what you want to think, and that, uh, you know, in the end, it will all work out if no one influences us uh, in a non-organic way. If, if it's organic, I think that uh, as, as uh, people with conscience, we're going to make the right choices. But if it's not organic, it really pisses me off, okay? Really, really pisses me off as not organic. So... <clears throat> Given that, and my followers come from all bents, you know, some of you are on the left, some of you are on the right, uh, and I've already said I'm more, I'm more libertarian, so I just want to be left alone, and that's true in technology as well as in everything else. I just want to be left alone. Okay, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty good person with, you know, uh, pretty good. Uh, uh, I'm a good citizen, and I don't do anything bad. Uh, but I want to be left alone. I don't want to be spied on. I don't want. I don't want to be thought of as a criminal when I don't do anything. So anyway, switch off to to a 
different area here. And by the way, let me uh, 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 say that I'm uh, happy to introduce my sponsor, Linode. And there's a special link there, which gives you a discount if you try Linode.com. And I have another video on using Nextcloud, and you can use Linode using Nextcloud, and you can actually try it out and practice for as little as a few cents. You, you know, try it out for a few days, and it'll probably cost you a few cents, and may cost you as much as five dollars a month to try it out. It's a good way to learn, and it's uh, that's the nice thing about you know you don't have to buy a computer. You just uh, set up a Linode server, and it's cheap enough that you can play with it and fire it up, kill it, fire it up, kill it. And they have a special offer. They they're giving you a sixty day credit, or sixty dollars credit, uh, if you use that link linode.com slash Rob Braxman. Uh, in looks like in uppercase, but that didn't work last time, so I had to use lowercase. I think the uppercase works now. So the uppercase R and B. So anyway, that's uh, that's Linode. Anyway, uh, the couple of things I want to talk about. And uh, one of the things is that my I have a Linux computer. This is it. This is it. One one of the laptops that I reviewed, and this is a Linode. I'm sorry, <laughs> a Star Star laptop, and it's specifically made to run Linux. And this is what I've been using uh, till pre-COVID. Okay. Then I messed up, guys. I messed up. So what happens is I spilled coffee on this laptop. I basically destroyed it by spilling coffee on it. Okay? So I spilled coffee on it. And then because of COVID, they couldn't get a shipment from China to get the keyboard. So I had to wait. And I was patient. And I waited a very, very long time. I think 60 days before they even had... A keyboard that arrived, and understandably, you know, there was no shipment from China. And uh, anyway, the keyboard finally arrived, and uh, I purchased the keyboard to replace it. And and the thing about Star laptops is, if you if you open up the computer and fix it up and do whatever stuff, you do not lose the warranty. So I uh, opened it up and put the uh, keyboard in. It was kind of a complex thing because you have to take everything apart, everything, to put a keyboard in. And uh, so I did, and it didn't work. I don't know why it didn't work, and it didn't work. And uh, and I didn't have time. I was so busy, guys. I'm b busy with the channel. Everything, you know, started to to blow up here on on my my channel, and you know that moved me to almost double double my uh, subscriber count since, just since COVID days. And and so I wasn't able to work on it. So I had to stick to Windows. And some of you are making like nasty comments on the videos because I have to use Windows. And and, uh, and yes, I had to use Windows because my Linux computer, this is a fairly fast computer and it was not available. Anyway, Star Laptops reached out to me. Star Laptops reached out to me and said, we'll fix it for you. And uh, and uh, they sent me a DHL uh, delivery to ship this express to the UK where this comes from, and uh, I shipped it them to them, and they basically got it and fixed it in one day and shipped it back to me. And uh, one week later, I got it back. One week. This is on to the UK. I mean, it was like incredible. So anyway, uh, uh, thank you to Star Laptops, as you know. I've uh, done a review on Star Laptops, but uh, they really have been good with their service. So I'm, I really, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know if they knew I was a YouTuber before. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that I can play with a computer, change the SSD drive, do all that, and it's not going to go under warranty, off warranty. And the fact that they offered to fix it, and you know, uh, instead of paying for a warranty, this is a fairly inexpensive computer. This was only eight hundred bucks, including shipping, eight hundred bucks. Okay, and it's as as uh, good as uh, an HP that you pay twelve hundred bucks for. So even if you had to pay for repair, uh, it still would be cheaper 
to do it, and they did it so fast. Uh, uh, so, you know, I appreciate it, and they did a good job, and it's still running, and it's perfect here. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about is Windows, because I was stuck on Windows for for months here, and uh, I still need to use Windows even then, because uh, for Adobe Premiere Pro, I don't have a choice. I have to use Windows. I try to use any kind of video uh, program on the on the Linux. And unfortunately, for you to YouTube editing, you're not. It's going to be difficult. So I found that I there was no easy solution that I can use that uh, you know was fairly trouble free to use consistently for for YouTube videos. So I have to have a Windows computer. Um, uh, even though I wanted to use Linux, I was stuck with using Windows for for uh, video. But I used you know Linux for everything else at the time until I had to stick to to Windows. And and uh, one of the things that you know you if you use Windows and you follow my advice, my advice is you install Windows or Linux or Mac. And you do not put your data on your computer so that if something happens to your computer, uh, you do not lose your data. So in my case, I always use an external SSD drive. So this is the way I do it. You know, and this is why on all of my computers I have a Velcro. And the reason I have a Velcro is I Velcro the SSD. Okay, so I don't I don't store the data on here. If it's data, only programs reside on this. I put data on here. So then I just plug that in on any computer. So actually this is where I keep my data and I move it to Windows, Mac, or uh, or Linux and it's still the same. So I can move this. Uh, it's uh, This doesn't run on a Mac, but this is in NTFS format, which can be read by Linux. And so it's an NTFS which can be read by Windows and Linux, and I move it back and forth, and I can move the data around without without uh, in a heartbeat, no no loss of data whatsoever. And this is the way I I keep my data outside of the computer. So when my computer had to be serviced, that's always a worry. You ship your computer to somebody else, and since I couldn't access the computer, I I couldn't check what was on the hard drive. Uh, but I don't really have to worry too much because my data is here. It's not on the Linux. My data is also not on my Windows computer, which I'm currently using to broadcast to you. And uh, I'm the data is not on there. My data is always on these. So in my last video, I said, well, you know, think about maybe moving instead of this using Nextcloud. Now, what's the difference between this, which is a hard drive? And Nextcloud. Well, Nextcloud can be shared, so multiple people can use it, multiple devices. And the other thing that Nextcloud can do, uh, which this can't, is it can work with mobile phones. So when you have data on a mobile phone, you can put it on Nextcloud instead of this. So, so that's what I've shifted to. Uh, I, you know, I got to change my setup, but uh, but I'm gonna actually make these. This this is a Samsung T7 one terabyte. I'm going to preload this with uh, Nextcloud and you just plug it into a Raspberry Pi. So you plug this into a Raspberry Pi and it will boot this and this is your Nextcloud. So I'm going to sell this at some point and uh, hopefully for just 99 bucks more than the cost of the hard drive. So whatever the cost of the hard drive is, SSD, Probably just ninety nine bucks, and then I'll preset it for you and just plug it in. So if you if you're not an expert on doing that, at least I'm giving you an option. So uh, uh, if you're you want to learn how to do it yourself, and many many instructions on the internet, and you should learn it. I, I'm really doing it for the people who are less techy, uh, and this one is very easy to do. I mean, you could do it on your own if you know Linux. Uh, it's not like the Google phone. The Googling a phone as as you know, from my experience, is kind of complex. Degoogling a phone is not something that, you know, I, I would recommend everyone to be doing. Uh, it's it's difficult. You know, I, I just learned a new phone. Uh, Samsung one terabyte SSD 
uh, Cosmic Rose is called a Samsung T7. I believe it's 169 at the store, and it's all complete SSD. It's 169 for one terabyte. Then you can probably buy the $99 for 500 gigabyte, a mega uh, 500 gigabyte. So. Uh, you know, so if you don't want to go uh, one terabyte, you know, you don't want to save money, you can start off with something cheaper for $99 or something. It, it's, it's, it's cheaper. Than, it's probably, it could be less than 100 It could be $89. i am not sure. $89.99 uh, for the uh, Samsung T5, I think. I have one of those too. There's a 256 gigabyte, a uh, 500 gigabyte, and then a terabyte. Uh, so, so when you have a Nextcloud, you you basically then can sync your files to the Nextcloud, or transfer your files to Nextcloud. So you try not to keep any data on your device, so that you can do a reformat or a reinstallation off your device several times a year, and that eliminates any viruses. Because that's a problem with malware. It's you think that the solution to, to malware is an antivirus. And I don't want to dissuade you. Uh, I will dissuade you from using an antivirus because an antivirus is sucking useless. An antivirus isn't going to stop any malware from coming in. I don't even know today what the purpose of an antivirus is. It doesn't stop anything. Okay. It, uh, 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 Sunny, uh, what's her name on the... Uh, on, uh, I don't know what her YouTube name is, but somebody uh, from uh, Brax was telling me about all these different hacks on, on, uh, you know, the I, Intel's, and you know, and you want to like sometimes do a reset in case somebody inserted malware because they took control of your device, and the thing is that uh, you can't do that if you put your data on your computer. So philosophically, my solution is. Keep as little data as possible on your phone, on your computers, and put it elsewhere in a next cloud. Or in my case, uh, at the moment, I'm you know I'm I was heavily using a, an external drive, but that's only for me. If I want to share with with uh, other people, then I should have a next cloud. So, what is next cloud? It's in my last video. So watch my last video so you know what next cloud is. So anyway, that's uh, that's uh, why it's a good thing to export your data out. So when I have to get my device fixed at Star, Star Laptops, I don't have to worry about you know putting uh, you know important things on the computer that somebody could copy uh, when I send it to them because there was nothing on it. So it was just garbage. So because. Uh, my main data is external. So even if the computer failed and I don't have access to the device, there wasn't anything serious that was on the phone itself. Now, uh, I'm brought, I kind of like went to, I talked too much here, so I'll, I'll uh, uh, talk, we'll, we won't have as much Q&A time because of my talking. But the, the other topic I want to talk about is that since I use Windows, just some basic things about Windows, it just if you don't think about it, it's it's incredible how much information they're taking from you if you don't think about it. It's very easy to solve, by the way. It's very easy to solve. But I just want to think uh, let you think that you log in and Windows now says, okay, you need to log in with your Microsoft ID, kind of like your Apple ID and your Google ID. And so they're trying to force you to do the same thing. So you log into your Microsoft account online. Okay, which you're supposed to use with Office 365 and all that. And uh, I don't have Office 365. I don't use any uh, any of that stuff. You know, I use only open source. So I, I use uh, uh, LibreOffice and so on. And I don't I don't use any of that stuff. So I have no need for a Microsoft account. But when you set up a Windows computer, the first thing I do is I do not use a Microsoft account. I do not. This is something that's very, very important. I do not. I set up a local account. This is extremely important. Local account. Also, I set up two accounts. One is, this is, Windows doesn't do this for you. They set up one account and that account is root. I don't do that. I always have uh, the root account I don't use. 
then I set up another account which I use. So the second account, which is not root, I may call it admin, but it's not. Okay. I set up another account that's root. So my admin account is not root. And if a virus hits me, it can't do anything because I'm not root. So it can't go infect my computer. That alone is will, you know, it's more important than an antivirus. That is that is in in itself the biggest defense against an antivirus because it's very hard for a hacker to attack you when you're not root. They can only attack you in small chunks. They can't really do anything that persists in seriousness unless you're an admin uh, true admin account. So my admin account is not an admin. So that's my, you know, I'm revealing my little trick to you, but when you log into my computer, it says admin. It is not an admin. Even though I call it that, it is not an admin. Do not put your name on your Zucking computer. Do not put your name on your Zucking computer. Because if you put your name on the computer, your email takes that name and inserts it into your email. You could be using an email that's, uh, you know, um, Twitty. Twitty at... Uh, uh, you know, uh, at gmail.com and you think, okay, I'm not using my real name here. And then what happens is it inserts the metadata based on the computer name. And, and then uh, I did a test of that in one of my videos on Periscope live. Somebody actually sent me emails for a test before the broadcast. And I showed them that, you know, your device is actually sending your name uh, from the computer name. Don't do that. Now one of the things that happened happens to most people is they set up their Microsoft account with a Microsoft ID or Microsoft account, whatever you call that, the online account. And uh, and uh, then they don't think about it and they don't understand that they have history. This is the like the biggest one. Your activity history. So if you open up a JPEG on your computer, it goes into your Microsoft account that you opened the JPEG. Let's just presuppose that you, you know, you're a young guy and you uh, have a collection of nude photos on your on your computer, and you did not pay attention to this. Now it shows that that you were opening all these um, photos on your computer, it shows up on history, and sent to Microsoft. It's like Zuck. What an invasion of privacy. Okay, and to the Microsoft account. So it's not just that it's doing it, it's sending it to the Microsoft account kept in a Microsoft account database on under your name with your credit card on there. And it showed this is what you've been doing. This is all the websites you visited. Pretty much like Google. And it's like crazy. And you let them do that. So you have to actually, it's simple enough. You go to the privacy settings of Microsoft and turn everything off, including Zucking Cortana, which I don't Zucking use. I don't use anything voice. I turn that off. I cover up my cameras and say, Zuck you guys. I, I don't, don't spy on me. Okay. I just want to be left alone. Don't spy on me. So yes, Windows is a pain because by default, the average user doesn't know this. Fortunately, it's not a big deal. You can fix it. You can fix it. So it's not like uh, an iPhone or, or Android where you can't fix it. Like Google Google services will spy on you, whether whatever settings you have. And fortunately on Windows, you can disable it. So it just takes a little bit of you know foresight to know what to click on. And you can do it. So at least there's a solution. So there you go. Uh, just be careful guys go to the privacy settings on uh, on your windows computer make sure you change your account to a local account not something from the cloud uh you may need to go log into the cloud to update your system if you want to buy something like a you know update to windows but then after you do that and it's been updated leave that account and log in with a local account and then so they don't track you you know, with whatever you're doing, like Google and like Apple. We don't want that. We don't want that. So anyway, just wanted to, to let you know that I'm happy that I'm now uh, back to 
to Linux. My Linux computer, by the way, is running Ubuntu, and some of you are saying Ubuntu is being is spying. Yes, it is true that uh, I I can prove this. I actually, you know, uh, put a, a sniffer on there, and yes, Ubuntu does a check. It does a check login. It's not much. It just logs in with your device identity to them to let you know that there's a unique device. I think they're just doing a count of uh, how many people are actually using Ubuntu. Uh, that's the only thing I've seen with Ubuntu itself. So as much as you think that's bad, obviously Windows is doing that. Google's doing that and so on. Now, a de-Google phone doesn't do any of this. So people keep asking me, what do I need to do that is special if I get a de-Google phone? Now, thank you to, to, uh, to all of you. Many of you now have the Google phone from me. I, I mean, I, I'm, you know, it's obviously a, lo uh, a large number of you have gotten phones from me. And it's, uh, it's uh, so a lot of you have heard the message and you're always wondering, you know, what, what can you do, what can't you do? with a Google phone. So this is a Moto G7 Play, which is the cheaper version. I, I kind of like this because of the size, even though there's a couple of bugs on it, but the bugs don't bother me. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's, the bugs are going fi to get fixed someday, and it doesn't really matter. It's not, it's not, uh, not earth-shattering bugs, but it's inexpensive, and it's kind of disposable because it's cheap. Now, one of the things that uh, you, you don't need to worry about is if you say, well, if I run Amazon on it, are they going to spy on me and so on? If I uh, connect to my bank, what do they know? Well, you see, I, the Google phone doesn't have any identity. It doesn't even actually tell you what the user agent is. You know what the user agent is? You go to a website and it defines your device. It says you're on a Motorola G7 Play and so on. It doesn't actually, uh, it, you can actually manipulate that using... Uh, uh, Aurora Store and Micro G, you can actually alter what they think the device is. And it doesn't open up IME, IMZ, any of that. Uh, there's no Google ID, so the number one identifier on the phone is the IME, IMZ, and Google ID, which doesn't exist. Uh, an app, that, there's no Google on here, so Google doesn't read your IME, IMZ because they're not on here. And a third party can't read that. So there's really nothing on here that they can gather other than the fact that you're using some sort of Android and uh, that's it. And it looks like it's some kind of device like X, but we don't know what. And it's not its not enough to, to track you. It's not enough to profile you. So yes, for those of you who have gotten these phones, and, and I, like I said, I've sold a lot of these, and uh you know obviously i you know most of you uh have expressed to me how you've just enjoyed having it and feel free and i do too because i use it myself and i do feel a lot freer because i pretty much it's not limited you know it's like a normal phone i can do gps i can do all that i mean it's the normal things i can do a boating app called navionics I can do, you know, even Waze, which is a Google product. I can do, you know, uh, you can, I can even do games. I mean, there's, there's really not, not much of a limitation because the dangers that Google poses is not here. It's absent. Device fingerprinting doesn't exist. So, so yes. Yeah, so I continue to sell these. These are, these are, uh, you know, good, good. Uh, solutions for our privacy and I, I will continue to find solutions for you guys another one that you know uh, I've been selling a lot of are the Brax routers and guys thank you for support of my products and and obviously you must like them because you you keep buying them and it really sustains this channel you know it's uh, uh, otherwise we cannot uh, sustain this channel on five hundred dollars of of uh, advertising from from Google, from uh, YouTube. And thank you also for the Patreon supporters. And some of you even donate outside of Patreon and just donate directly to PayPal. And uh, thank you for that as well. You, you guys don't understand how how appreciative I am that you're keeping this channel going. And uh, we're a third of the way there, to close to a third of the way there 
to getting to 100k so yeah so that's uh, the next goal 100k 100k so uh, at this moment you know 50k is is uh you know by the end of the year is is at the least i can do but uh, hopefully uh another joe rogan will come up or maybe joe rogan will talk about it again and uh hopefully then we can uh expand the channel some more but i you know my job is to find solutions for you and if you have other ideas i did next cloud because a lot of you mentioned it a lot of you i i'm not an expert on next cloud i had to learn it myself and uh set up servers and so on i you know did it like i don't know 20 20 30 times until i you know i tried it on different platforms a lot of research went into it and and uh and hopefully uh, it, it gave you some information. So watch that video on Nextcloud. So thank you so much. Okay, so um, the next half of this broadcast then will be, I can only dedicate half now because I took half of it, sorry about that, uh, to Q&A. So if you have any specific questions, you can ask me now. I'm gonna start reading your questions here. Rob, did you see Joe Rogan is moving to Texas? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, James Miller, uh, I don't know if you know this, but in California, in California, there's a surtax, a state surtax. So if you make over a million, they charge you an extra, an extra 20% in income tax. If you, so if your earnings are, are a million a year or more, they charge you 20%, 20%. So that means federal taxes, you know, whatever federal tax is, state tax is the normal, whatever it is. So your tax is normally what, 33%? And then you're in the tax bracket at 50%, 50%. So California decided, oh no, that's not good enough. We wanna tax you another 20% on top of that. So, so we guarantee that we will take 70% of your money anything you make over a million 70 percent so don't you feel like you're in scandinavia so that's california so don't be shocked obviously when people like joe rogan says he has to leave because he got a hundred million dollar contract from spotify so makes sense <laughs> i mean would you give 70 percent of your income an extra 20 percent zuck an extra 20 percent so you know uh which may not to, to many of you might think oh uh if you make that much money then you deserve to pay taxes and you deserve to pay taxes yes the problem is and this is the it, this happened to me in my life you know there there's some years when i made a lot of money and then there are some years i don't make any money so it's not consistent but if i make money if you average it out it's you know it's reasonable but sometimes i make a lot of money over a short period of time and then they take 70 percent so when you even it out it lowers it because they don't look at the average so they just say well you made x therefore we're going to take x now and uh so yeah that's uh if you want to know if you want to know why joe rogan want to leave then <laughs> makes sense to me <laughs> makes sense to me because you know this is california if you live in california new york they're going to tax you so yeah sales tax here is 10 percent so <clears throat> is your sales tax 10 percent if you want to have 10 percent sales tax come over to california santa monica wants to charge even more i think santa monica you know one of the most uh progressive here i think they're uh 10.5 or is it 11 now i think they want to be 11 percent uh yo steven allard how are you doing my friend uh augustine Hara, what browser do you recommend to like same same you use the same browser isolation use many browsers use them all firefox chrome chromium uh and brave and whatever you want at least with Firefox on there. The idea is multiple browser. Don't ask me to say, pick one browser or another. That doesn't, doesn't make any sense, okay? The key is multiple browsers. Okay, why do I say use Chrome? 
because if you're going to go to Google, use Chrome. If you're going to use YouTube, use Chrome. Why? They're not going to take any more data because they already have it. So if you're going to go to YouTube, Chrome is perfect. You can use Google Earth and all that. They already know anything, everything anyway because you're going to a Google property and they're not going to get any more information by going to Chrome. But if you're going to go to Amazon, go to Firefox. If you're going to, uh, and I'm not going to mention Facebook, but if you're going to go to Twitter, use Firefox. If you're going to use, uh, uh, what else did I not mention? Uh, whatever, other app, go to Firefox. And, and that way then, Chrome cannot spy on Firefox. It can't happen. It's called browser isolation. So by doing this, then you're safe. Don't worry about cookies and none of that actually can be controlled now. I, that's in my video that nobody watched because people do not want the way I communicate my videos, guys. Think, guys. I don't follow the mainstream. I said I don't block cookies. And a lot of people were upset with that. Well, you must not know anything because the hated one said I should block. I don't know if he said, but... I presume he does. Uh, hated ones say you should block cookies. So it's like nonsense. What is the point of blocking cookies when they're doing browser fingerprinting? When you talk to the people who actually do the uh, ad tech, the, the, the spy programmers, they don't care about the cookies. They can store the information in a database without a cookie if they can fingerprint you. So cookies are nonsense. They're tracking you with or without cookies. So if you think you're safer because you're using Brave, that is false. That is false. Brave is useful because it's a separate browser. Brave is not useful because it's blocking cookies. Because cookies are no longer the way that you're attacked. Just like somebody actually argued, argued with me about using Privacy Badger because I don't use Privacy Badger anymore. I don't block, uh, even though even I recommended it at one point. I don't block JavaScript. All of these just identify your computer. So I don't, I try to have a very clean, plain vanilla uh, browser with no extensions. I do not put extensions because extensions can spy on you. They also identify you. If you block JavaScript, if you have specific things on your browser like Privacy Badger and all this, you will actually fingerprint your device. So I, mine is not. I, I don't have that. So my Google Chrome does not have anything. So by doing that, then they, you know, they uh, have less information on who I am. So nice thing about if they don't know. By the way. How do I know that they don't know who I am? Uh, I actually have a way of doing it because I, I go on YouTube and I see how many ads did I get from Biden versus Trump? How many ads did I get from Democrats versus Republicans? Well, guess what, guys? In my case, it's even. It's whoever's doing most of the advertising. I get both. And that means success. That means they can't profile me. They don't know what, what I am. I love it. That's the way to go. When you can actually trick the algorithm, they don't know what you are, and they're sending you ads uh, that are conflicting, it's perfect. Okay? Perfect. So that's that's what you want. That's what you want. Is That's your clue that if your disinformation is working. In my case, it is working. I don't really care about cookies. Cookies don't matter because they're going to browser fingerprint you. I separate my... I, I have at least three browsers uh, and mostly heavily uh, in two because I don't have Facebook. Facebook would be the third browser if I had one. I, since I don't have one, I mostly have two and then uh, three or four if I'm going to do something unique. So two mostly Chrome for Google products. And you know how you know how you set up your, your computer so you know what browser to use because it's kind of confusing? Is I put my favorite links on the toolbar uh, on my Chrome. I put all the YouTube and all that, all the YouTube stuff on my Chrome. But I don't have any other links on there that's not related to Google. And then on my Firefox, I put all the you know, Amazon links and all that. Braxme and all the other th stuff that I do that, that I need to access uh, on a frequent basis, you know, as far as links. It's on Firefox. So then simply by opening up the browser, I know, ah, I'm on the wrong browser. So that's my clue for me. And you do this on mobile as well. And that's my clue for me that I'm on the wrong, right or wrong browser simply by setting up specific uh, 
bookmarks in the toolbar, in the bookmark toolbar at the top, and that warns me, oh, I'm on the wrong browser. So that's what uh, I recommend. It's, it's, then I, you just plan it out and do it once, and then watch the results. And if the, if you, the advertising is not tailored to one side or the other, then you're getting a more balanced view. So uh, not that I like it because I don't like politics, but I like the fact that they can't actually, I tolerate the ads. And by the way, yes, if you watch my video, uh, my thing here, YouTube has been pumping a lot of mid-roll ads and I can't control this, guys. I watch videos and every few minutes I get a sucking mid-roll ad and it's like, in my case, they're all political. So it, it's even more irritating. You know, it's not like they're recommending a product. It's like, you know, I got to get a, you know, <clears throat> a bunch of ads, uh, you know, political ads in a row. And it's a pain in the butt to, to, to go through. But at least uh, it's not for me. I don't, you know, as you know, I don't make much money from these ads. So uh, anyway, just so just so you know. Any developments on Ubuntu Touch support on newer devices? Well, the, the only device... Uh, the li the only Linux device available right now is the Pine Phone. That's the only true Linux device at the moment uh, that is available. Uh, you know, without one, then we don't know what to say. So, it's, you know, when when I get my Librem Five, then I'll tell you how that's going to work. I I donated right in the middle of Rob's video. Donated to who? Uh, you can turn off. You can turn off ads. Uh, this country is going down to Chinatown. Uh, Rob, can you post a link when when you were? It's in. It's in the top of my. It's in my. Uh, when you go to my channel, it's the top video. It's like response to Joe Rogan. Just search Joe Rogan, Rob Braxman, and then the video will come out. And look in the description. Uh, how does a Google phone protect from Zuckbook Mac address tracking? Um, uh, you can't. Uh, that uh, 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 the Google phone has nothing to do. Zuck, Zuckbook is a different different problem. Don't be on Zuckbook. <laughs> that's that's all you need to do. Okay. Uh, if you're on Zuckbook, you will and the app you will mess up your life so solution don't go on Zuckbook if if you are forced to go on Zuckbook even though I told you you shouldn't it's one of the most dangerous things you can do it's more dangerous than Google Facebook is the most dangerous platform ever uh, if you if, to a doxer it's really important that you're on Facebook uh, but Facebook can't do a lot of the spying unless you're on the app so if you're on the uh, browser they can't do that so you can't get deal uh, what uh, machines have taken over yet is the audio jack port now dead forever I still <laughs> this has an audio jack port so zuck all these changes I, I like my odd audio jack port um, yeah what why why you know what problem are we trying to solve here uh, get them to one million uh, just hundred thousand first Get me to a hundred. <clears throat> Subscribe to my channel, guys, and get me to get me to a hundred. Uh, not because for me, but because for you. If the message gets out there more, then we'll have more attention drawn to this, and maybe these companies will start to respond to saying, "Hey, they're a political force. We need to pay attention to the followers of Rob Braxman because uh, uh, otherwise they won't buy our products." Okay, so some of the stuff and false promises from Apple saying we're the privacy phone and then they zuck you up. Uh, Google with all the spying that goes on. I mean, some of this uh, needs to stop. And, uh, you know, and they need to give us more options. And Windows decided that they're going to follow in the footsteps of, of Google and spy on you more. So it's just frustrating. Amazon with Alexa Echo and now Ring cameras don't ever get sucking Alexa Echo or ring cameras don't they're sending that data elsewhere to Palantir okay I don't know if they're sending it to Palantir but it wouldn't shock me they're sending it to police state uh, police have access to the videos and ring and of course 
that has to be stored in a central database and who the, do the police contract for doing this? Obviously, Palantir, because they've been doing it before. AI is a real thing. Don't date anyone who does Facebook. What if kids and wife use Zuckbox and I don't? Doesn't that cancel out any measures I take to eliminate Zuckbox from my life? It a little bit. It does. Uh, YDB correct. So get them out of Zuckbox. I mean, you got to put your foot down. Uh, I'm thinking about go giving up Excel. Yes, there's uh, uh, LibreOffice. Why do you need to do that? There's a free open source one. Uh, Never had a Fedbook account, so I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> Good for you. No get Google Home Mini. Don't get any Google Nest, you know, all these spy, spy stuff. So, like, I made my own security camera because, because uh, uh, which I'm out of stock of, because they're kind of hard to build, and, you know, I, I ran out of stock, and it takes so much time to build them, and we have to actually, you know, get, get to building a lot of... 3D printer parts, and that's really the slowdown. Is uh, you know we have a stack of three 3D printers that have to be fired up. Uh, LibreOffice rules. What about smart home devices such as smart things? What privacy concerns exist? Um, the the problem is if the smart device is connected to a central data collector like Google, Amazon. Any, any one of those. That's where you worry about them. Uh, and then the rest, you know, are the Chinese products where nobody actually tested the cybersecurity part of that. And then they're accessible over the Internet. And they tell you to do port forwarding and all that. That's a clue. If you have port forwarding and or some like Ring that actually purposely sends the data out, uh, presumably to your mobile app, but actually they're sending it to the database. Um, what is Microsoft currently working on behind the scenes? Why don't you talk to Microsoft about that? Are Arlo bad as Ring? Uh, again, they're putting it in the cloud, you know. Uh, and the, the other thing that I'm going to tell you that is kind of stupid if you think about it. You're buying these Ring cameras and there's Arlo cameras and what's the other one? Um, that cheap one, the little one. Uh, you know what I mean. So anyway, you're buying these cameras. They're all Wi-Fi based. Wi-Fi. Uh, I mean, you know, I already wrote an app that can knock Wi-Fi devices off. So if I approach a device that's running Wi-Fi cameras, I can turn it off. So what the Zucker are you get, getting yourself protected from if I can turn off your camera? The actual solution is you got to do wired internet for wide, wired Ethernet, not internet, wired Ethernet for cameras so that they're not affected by that. You got to go wired. Okay, don't go for this cheap Wi Fi crap because anyone, it's such a simple cyber cybersecurity thing to block a Wi Fi signal. It's uh, you deny them access. It's uh, you send them, uh, you send them a bunch of packets that says disconnect and they disconnect. They're that dumb. They will disconnect. Okay, so. So and yet they're selling these devices. So a lot of you have Wi-Fi cameras and saying, "Oh, I'm re really safe with a Wi-Fi camera." Well, you're not safe against me. All I need is my. I'll bring a Pine phone and uh, you know and use that to interrupt your signal. I don't even need a, a strong strength. I just have to emit a signal saying disconnect, and you will disconnect. Your device will disconnect. I can walk around and prove that to a Ring camera. This, this this is common cybersecurity. There's a lot of videos on on how to do that. So this is like, you know, baby, baby level hacking stuff. And you're like thinking, oh, well, that, that's a good thing. Uh, ring cameras, and, you know, and, you know, uh, not only can I block a ring camera, then the, the uh, signal, uh, your, your videos are being sent to uh, Amazon uh, to make available to law enforcement and probably the federal government. I always disable my Wi-Fi and hotspot. Rob Smart, but seems like the rest of California, of CA, is DASF, whatever that means. Uh, you're safe. We fought a good fight, but I know I'm going to try, try to be anonymous or trying to be private is dead. Uh, uh, I just told you. 
I'm getting political ads from the left and the right. So I don't know what you're talking about. I apparently is working for me. Okay, if they don't know what I believe in, I've succeeded. Okay, and that's the point. They don't know what I believe in. So uh, I already gave my opinion on sucking Arlo cameras. Okay, uh, imagine a device inside you. You already have a device inside you. You put it in your pocket and it's there. You know, you thought that, you know, you'd have to get chipped and people willingly carry the spy device with them. So, you know, it's crazy that, you know, many of you say, well, it's not important, I have nothing to hide. And I'm like saying, don't be zucked, okay? Not too many people appreciate what I talk about. You know, some people follow me because I, I talk about tech and, and they're interested in whatever tech I'm talking about, not necessarily in the privacy issue because they say I have nothing to hide. So I use these Friday, you know, uh, Q and A times to emphasize that you know I am not the, just the tech guy. I am the internet privacy guy or the privacy tech guy. You know it's a very specific thing. I, I have a very narrow market, and it's a very very specific thing. I, I'm not like Linus Tech Tips trying to sell you the the, the newest uh, Ryzen AMD because you know it doesn't matter. So uh, you know. I, I'm more focused just on on the privacy side of things. So I'm not going to recommend a product just because it's tech if it's not going to offer something for you from a privacy point of view. So yes, it's easy to make money in little amounts uh, by taking advertising from people who want to sell you everything uh, you know that may not may not make sense. Now I'm a, I'm a prepper, so there are certain things that I actually consider are okay for my channel that have nothing to do with privacy and that is related to prepping prepping now uh, you know uh, I have a boat and my boat is I consider to be a nice uh, off-grid kind of uh, testing testing thing and later on I'm actually gonna uh, you know put uh, I, it's already pretty much set up I already put lithium batteries on there and uh, maybe I'll do a video, of, you know, me doing uh, off-grid solar on it. I mean, everybody does that, but you know, it's just it's something I believe in anyway. So, so I want to like uh, uh, set it up for for off-grid off-grid uh, uh, power because I have lithium batteries and and you know I test refrigeration and such that requires a lot of power. So maybe maybe I'll do that. It probably won't be interesting to a lot of people, but uh, it's what I believe in. So just like I do ham radio uh, videos, I haven't done many in a while because I've you know I've been focused on doing some of this tech stuff and Linux and all that. So there's not enough time to, to focus on it. But uh, you know I still believe in it. So ham radio is still important, and maybe I'll put it on the boat and find some way to do that. Or maybe I'll split off the channel and you know make a channel that I don't have to worry about view count because it's not about getting the views. It's just just what I believe in. So, uh, did you work for Apple or another company you know so much about tech? Uh, I worked for my own company for pretty much as as far as tech. I've never worked for any other company but myself. But my companies have some of my some of my companies have been very successful. So I've companies have been very successful. So, uh, <coughs> you know, I, I had a big development staff and all that. So, so yeah. So obviously, I've I am very knowledgeable about tech because I was doing it myself. So I was the uh, chief software architect for my own company. Uh, design design everything and I had programming staff and and that's what I did for a long time I'm now just a small business doing everything by myself so I don't do that anymore but that's what I did in my prior life and that's why I know so much because I did it hands-on okay so uh, I learned C programming when uh, there was no such thing as a C programming class so I you have to learn it on your own so I did that you know I I uh, learned how to send signals to graphic cards by uh, sending uh, you know bits 
bit triggers to uh, in assembly language to trigger a chip to work. So you know I was doing it at that level. So you know I the sending uh, uh, creating terminal programs using using uh, your own terminal programming software uh, using uh, you know RS two thirty two C. So I did all that. So when you do it at that level, then you 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 uh, you will know stuff. Uh, give this guy a like. He's go going. Uh, uh, thank you, fellow Filipino prepper G Maxwell. Is Maxwell is a Filipino prepper? Uh, thank you, Maxwell. That's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I didn't even know there were any Filipino preppers. <laughs> uh, uh, in the Philippines or here? So Rob is new. Never about trickery. That's. Uh, one, two, three, that is correct. Uh, no shills for me. I, you know, I tell you as it is. And when I take an advertiser, know that, uh, you know, there must be something I like about the advertiser for me to even take them. Uh, otherwise, I'll just, if I, even uh, if I mention somebody, I'll, I'll, I, if I'm not committed to it, I will not, uh, I will not necessarily give, give any kind of uh, uh, pro or con comment uh, about, uh, about uh, a product because you know I I, I want to be always be true to myself here and not be a shill I'm not gonna do things for financial gain I'm doing it for you okay because I don't have to and, and guys th the fact of the matter is I already had a successful career and the reason I can afford to do this even though I didn't make money for many many years doing this uh, yeah it's, some years I made zero a negative actually negative cash flow and uh, yet I kept doing it because no one was doing this and I felt like it was gonna pay back eventually and I wasn't worried about it because you know I I uh, had a successful career in the past and so I can sustain myself but it's hard to do this you know on negative cash flow so uh, so uh, you know I'm a little bit unique here because I don't think you know many youtubers have the kind of resources that you know I can muster to spend many years developing BraxMe without any kind of money, any kind of receipt. Now it's open source, so I don't make any money, and uh, and uh, to be doing this just dedicated to my task. And and many many people have come to me, you know, from a corporate point of view, saying you know trying to monetize what I do, and it, it didn't really jibe with what I'm doing because you know I. They always are like trying to push me in a certain direction which is not compatible with my main goal which is privacy so if it's not connected to that I, I don't want to do it because it's just you know it's you can sense it if I believe in it okay because I believe in it then you know that you know you believe in me so you know you you find I think you you know that I'm authentic because you 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 know there's no trickery to what I do here so so hopefully you feel that, and if so, then it's working. I, I know it's working because you know I grew th to thirty thousand subscribers, uh, which took me four years to do on Periscope, and I did it here in a year and a half on YouTube, which is a much more difficult platform. And I did learn on Periscope and how to do it, and and it's uh, moving here. So yes, let's next stop one hundred. May take a while, but we're gonna get there. What do I think about IPOAC? IP over. Uh, I don't know. What is an avian carrier? Goodness, I I don't know. I don't even know what an avian carrier is. It's like a bird. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, privacy is one of our human rights. Uh, apparently, they don't think so. The powers to be don't think so. May need many to, to drop into Brax files. It's open source platform. By the way, Brax me. Thank you. Uh, I'm running out of time here, but uh, uh, thank you, Greg Gold, for for saying that. Brax me. Uh, by the way, people say, what, where do we go to for a platform? And you know, I gave you Brax me. It's free. It's open source, and it's quite secure. And uh, it's never been hacked. And you know, whatever you put on there is is uh, is very private. And you can do end-to-end -end encryption and all that, and uh, <coughs> and uh, you you know there's source code there in case you doubt what it can do or cannot do, 
And, you know, uh, the only limitation is that it's really kind of a U.S. US server. So it may not be fast for use in other countries because my servers are, you know, it's, it's too small. So I can't like afford like, you know, have servers in every country. So so everything has to be uh, in the U.S. I'm not big enough to go replicate it over multiple uh, locations around the world because, you know, I'm. it's just me. So, and I don't make any money from it. So it's hard to invest something that doesn't make money. So, but come on in into Brax and that's where you can talk to other people with similar interests and you can create actually something called blog rooms and you can blog and uh, and even create private groups in there and most people don't even know that. So when you come into Brax, you see the chat and you don't realize that for many years people have been doing blog posts on there. So you can do that and uh, you can actually create private groups and we actually have a, a uh, commercial version enterprise version of Brax that allows you to actually use Brax only for yourself, meaning everyone on your Brax experience will only be from your group. And meaning you can isolate the app for one group. And it's called the Social Vision account, which is only 99 bucks a year. And you then can isolate and you can say, I want to create a wall so I don't see anybody else in Brax. And by the way, because of my YouTube success here, uh, you know, there's been a lot of people that have been going into Brax. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I think uh, half my YouTube subscribers, not half my account, is already on Brax Me just recently. So th thank you. I mean, that's a lot of you. That's a lot of you in Brax. Most of you are quiet, but, you know, you're in there. So thank you. And uh, we're getting a lot of people there every day. So, uh, Okay, I'm slowly running out of time here. Uh, no, I don't need to make a video about Kali, Galax OS, and Graphene OS. I already talked about the Google phone. <clears throat> and I already mentioned uh, Graphene OS is okay. E Foundation is okay. These are good solutions. They're, they're pushing certain things that I'm not pushing. And some of the things they're pushing that make them different are not important to me. So other than that, they're pretty much doing the same thing as I am. So if you want to use, if you don't want to use my phones and you want to use Graphene instead, fine. If you want to use eFoundation instead, fine. The difference is that my phones are cheaper. I just chose to, to have uh, a phone choice where you're not paying 700 bucks for a phone, which you will do on Graphene and eFoundation. So their phones will be, you know, 500 to 700 bucks. My phones are, you know, 269 to 299. So it's just a choice of phone. So I'm I'm trying to lessen the importance of a phone and it does the job and does the functionality, but I don't want you to get the fanciest phone and then you rely on it like it's so important. I'd rather use a computer more or use cloud storage more and rely on the phone less and use custom, you know, if you, you Camera wise, use your own camera separately. You know, these are better cameras than, than even the fanciest iPhones. These are better. Okay, look how tiny that is. Okay, and this is not a newest model. This is, uh, I need to sell this. I need to sell this. This is a G, G7X. Uh, I think. Uh, there's a uh, ver uh, version two or whatever. I, so it's a year old. So I need to. It, I bought this last year. So uh, maybe I need to sell this one because I'm using a Sony, Sony DSLR here now. So yeah, this is uh, still considered, you know, pretty uh, pretty up there. So that's what you should use. Is a a. Um, um, External camera, don't li rely on your phone. Don't put data on it. Move your data to a next cloud or your own private drive and uh, or your own private next cloud. And don't put stuff on the phone. The, the less stuff you have on your devices, the safer you will be. Can you download apps on your phone and use them locally on the phone, offline? No, typically most apps are, are internet connected. 
Yeah, uh, maybe except for a few games, but most apps, well, I guess it depends on the app. If it's a game, you know, <clears throat> if it has to rely on data from elsewhere, but don't worry about it. On a, the Google phone, there's no identity, so they don't even know who's doing it. Especially if you hide your IP address with a Brax router, they really have no idea. Uh, do you recommend I2P? Uh, I, I don't know what to recommend. I mean, I use I2P. I mean, I spent a lot of time with I2P, researching it and running it. I don't just see what, you know, there's no support for it. No one's using it. So, you know, it would be nice if, uh, you know, if applications run only inside I2P because, uh, you know, it uh, gives you like a layer of internet that's not on the internet. So, I, in fact, I had I2P loaded on here, but there was nothing to do on it. So you you, you almost have to, uh, you know, come up with a killer app, some, some something that drives people to use I2P. Thank you, Maxwell Galang. Thank you, guy. Uh, guy, sacrifice your stupid convenience for your freedom. You have no idea how your data and mass surveillance will be used against you. You know what? Maxwell Galang, and you said you're Filipino. Uh, <laughs> you know what's crazy? It's the biggest users of Facebook are sucking Filipinos. Uh, in fact, I'm going to guess that the two biggest users of Facebook are Filipinos and Germans. Those two countries, they're obsessed with Facebook. You cannot get these people off Facebook. You know, Filipinos and Germans, they're like, ah, it's it's uh it's really frustrating uh so i don't even try you know uh when i meet other filipinos i don't even tell them what i do except somebody actually spread the word and uh and suddenly now i'm recognized but uh but uh you know i, I some filipinos were watching me and said i was making sense to them and it was like i'm shocked so anyway, I it's, uh, uh, didn't even know any, any Filipinos were watching because they're so pro-Facebook. Uh, I hate relying on Facebook for anything. You cannot be on Facebook. It's evil. This is a company dedicated to evil, collecting your data in any means possible, including spying your MAC address. I mean, that is a low blow. MAC address, uh, to relate the story that just tells you just how stupid it is, this this uh, woman was at a bar. This woman was at a bar, and this this guy next to her was hitting on her, and she didn't like this guy, and uh, so ignored ignored him. And she went home, and guess what? This guy was recommended as a friend on Zucking Zockbook. Now they know each other's real names because they were recommended as friends by Zockbook simply by location. That is so zucked up. Sucked up. They did a proximity check and said, oh, you're in the same location. You were within six feet, so you must know each other. So we're going to now go share. <sighs> Crazy. Crazy. I'm proud to be part of the small percentage of people who have never even signed up for a Zuckbook account. I'm, I'm not one of those. I had a Zuckbook account that I ended in 2012. It took me, I was so active on it, it took me, a couple of months to delete all my stuff a couple of months that long okay and now I don't miss it at all in fact I hate it uh, is Kaspersky VPN any good please don't talk about any other VPN here bytes VPN which is now uh, available in Europe all of the US obviously and now in Australia so so we're expanding bytes VPN bytes VPN is what you need to think about because it works extremely well with Brax router, a VPN router. It's it's seamless. You don't have to worry about, you know, dealing with any other company, and uh, it's you know it makes it instantaneously instantaneously connect using Brax router. Um, uh, Facebook works in Google. Yes, no, most definitely. The reason I don't talk about Facebook is, is not because somehow over the years uh, I've lessened my, my you know, 
anger towards Facebook. I was the one who invented the term what the zuck. And if you go to Urban Dictionary, it's actually credited to me. So I have what the zuck dot net. I actually, you know, everyone on Periscope, I have 30,000 fellow uh, followers on Periscope and everyone knew what the zuck. Zuck this, zuck that. This is like a, you know, everyone on Periscope knew that. And they knew it because, you know, probably a million people heard me talk about zucking zuck. And I don't do it much on Facebook because I get filtered out by Facebook. So, uh, so no, I, you know, it's just that I, uh, when I talk about Zuck, and you watch, look at my Zuck videos, nobody watches them. So either people are just so pro Zuckbook on YouTube, or Google is, uh, is uh, suppressing it. So I don't know which. So my belief hasn't changed. I, I, I wish I could talk about Zuck all day, but because uh, they're the biggest evil. So... Um, see, so you're getting blocked here already because it thinks Zuck is a bad word. Um, so anyway, yeah, so somebody was saying, you're so hokey that you're using this term Zuck. Well, I invented it. Okay, just to show you how bad it was, Facebook actually assigned one of their executives to watch my broadcast every night. So I had a daily broadcast on Periscope. So I have thousands of videos where I talk about Zuck. And Zuck actually put an executive there to watch me and I guess report to... Uh, I, I, apparently I was a subject of their uh, weekly meetings back then. I think they forgot about me now. And then I, I uh, actually got inside information about some of the inside plans of Facebook. And some of the evil they're planning is just disgusting. And uh, fortunately, some of them appear to not be in, in play right now. And maybe because of COVID or, or whatever, but some, or maybe because of the things that happened in Congress with, with Cambridge Analytica. But uh, they were going to do things like, you know, uh, log you in automatically just by looking at your face. So you, you know, cloud-based facial recognition. It's like dangerous stuff like that. That is not like iPhone facial recognition. This is cloud-based facial recognition. We can be used by anyone. You know, you point your camera and say, oh, I know your name now. Suck. Danger stuff. Uh, they're going to, to try to use uh, COVID to their advantage, of course. So, morning. Morning. Um, uh, Amy U.S. Lander. Um, Amy U.S. Lander? Amla. It's hard to, hard to read that. That's why I quit it. Yes, you should have quit it. So anyway, guys, uh, uh, we're running out of time. So so um, hope you uh, hit the like on this broadcast. There's, there's a lot of concurrent viewers here. Appreciate it. And uh, hit that like button on there. And again, thank you to my uh, uh, sponsor, uh If I can get it up here. There. There you go. Linode. <laughs> Again, I don't take sponsors. Uh, I don't take sponsors uh, willy-nilly. You know, I, I, I want to make sure. I've known Linode as a company for a long time. And uh, and they're, you know, they're big on Linux, obviously. So they're big with the Linux community. And so they're compatible with what I do. So, and... So I welcome them to the Rob Braxman channel. Uh, yes, yeah, so so yes, I get a lot of offers for sponsorship, but uh, if it's not conducive to what I do, then I don't I don't need it. Okay, I, at least I can afford that. Uh, you know, I don't need them. I need you. You guys are more important. You buy these products. You know, uh, not only do you support your privacy. But you support other people getting the message. So when you buy the products, you actually, you know, you support the cause. It's not just helping yourself, but you're hel helping the cause. You're sustaining what this channel can do. And 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 like I said, I I've been doing this for five years now, uh, pretty much uh, with no income until now. So 
you know, now now the channel is big enough that it's you know that it can make an income. But before that, it's uh, I do it only because uh, uh, I want to, and you know, expectations of being able to support it were you know kind of hazy, not certain. But I believed in it enough that I kept doing it, and and uh, so here we are. Uh, what are my thoughts on iPhones? Uh, yeah, go go watch that video. I have a specific video on iPhones. This is not an iPhone. Okay. This is a de Google phone. This is not a Google phone either. This is a de Google phone, which is one of the ones I sell on my store on Braxme. If you want to find the store, just go to Braxme app. You can download the app if you want. Go to the website, Brax.me. Uh, download the app. It runs on iOS, Android, or just on a browser, any browser, on any platform. You can go to Braxme and there's a store in there. Okay, and then you can find my store and my products. So, uh, and if you have any ideas for future videos that you want me to consider, please, uh, uh, I'd you know, be so interested to know. I'll, I'll base it on, you know, what the majority, uh, uh, you know, like to hear about because I have so many topics. And some of it's already in other videos, but as I see if people are misunderstanding it, then maybe it's time for a new video. So, so just let me know. You know, put put in a comment on on a video and say you know I like to hear about X, and please feel free to do that, and uh, I will take that into consideration when I'm thinking about the next topic. Okay, guys, thank you so much. We're one minute over my planned schedule. Uh, make a video to completely privatize your entire tech. No, I can't do that. You have to, it's, you know, you can't do that in one video. It'll be uh, a five-hour video. Just watch the individual videos. It's already there. Will you make an email service? Uh, I'm trying to do it in a way that, you know, saves time and, uh, I can't do it until I know I can do it without much tech support. Otherwise, it's very costly to do. Okay? So, uh, you want me to do a video about Jabber? Uh, why? You can use Jabber, but, you know, you can use Braxme too. Uh, most effective firewall for Linux. Linux already comes with, you know, UFW, UFW, which is what I use. Um, what do you think about fingerprint ID on phones? Uh, fingerprint ID are just capacitance. You know, they they don't actually take a picture of your fingerprint, so they're only unique to the phone. So fingerprint ID is not an issue. Face ID on the phone, if not in the cloud and only in the phone. Is not normally an issue. Uh, Facebook doing facial recognition, that's an issue. <clears throat> yeah, I know Bra I know Jabber is centralized, but so what? <clears throat> well, I mean, it depends on what you're using it for. Okay, just because it's decentralized doesn't mean it's a good thing. For example, Matrix. Okay, so people are pushing Matrix because it's decentralized blockchain based why would I want metadata to be kept forever which is what matrix will do well, it depends if you're trying to keep like a, a ongoing you know reddit thing going like a reddit then you may want the conversation to be forever but if you're having a private com conversation I don't know why I want, would want to use matrix you got to understand what the platform does and people don't actually know maybe that's something we need to talk about you know, Matrix, Jabber, and all this. Why do you make these choices on these things? It depends. When I want to be private, do I really want to be decentralized where there are multiple copies of stuff? Or do I want to be centralized where I can delete it in one place? Okay? That's the difference. So you, you make a choice based on what your goal is. So it's in some cases, like politics, you may want to use Jabber and all that because you want it to stay out there. You don't want anybody, anyone to delete it. But if you want privacy... In your conversation, I don't know why would I why would I use that? I'd rather use Braxme where I know I can delete it in one instance. You can set up your own server if you want. Okay, 
So again, understand. Don't don't like get caught up with the technology and you say, oh, I heard that Jabber is good. Yeah, it can be good for certain things and it may not be good for certain things. Like Twitter can be good uh, because you can keep talking, you know, until they, they stop you from talking. Uh, but that's different from Brax Me where you can talk and nobody can see you except for who person you're talking to. Okay? So that's completely different purposes and all of those purposes are valid so it's not like it's not black and white it's not black and white okay so they're all they're all uh, solutions for different problems like for example if you use matrix in theory a, a Twitter could not censor you because matrix you can't delete it since it's not controlled by single party so there, that's good for like, let's say you said, I'm going to make a Twitter-like uh, forum and it's going to use the matrix. That's, that's good. Then no one can censor that. That's actually good. But I'm going to have a private conversation matrix. Uh, why? I'm going to have a private conversation on Jabber. Uh, why? Okay. Okay. So uh, just understand, you know, if you don't understand the tech, you, you have incomplete information. So that's what I can help you because, uh, you know, fortunately, uh, I have a more advanced understanding than the average. That doesn't mean I know everything, but I'm, you know, especially messaging, I know that. Okay, I know Matrix, I know Jab, XMPP, and all that. So, yes, I know that. I didn't use IRC back in the day. So, you know, I, I'm not like that old fashioned. I, was using IRC so uh, anyway thank you guys for watching and hit that uh, hopefully you're gonna feel like hitting that like button if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel and uh, maybe hit that notification bell and thank you for watching and we'll see you in a video this coming week and keep give me uh, suggestions on videos maybe maybe we'll talk about that jabber matrix all that because you know pluses and minuses because people don't understand that that's a possible topic i'll put it on a potential list as 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 one of the topics okay so uh uh thank you very much i'll see you next thursday morning on youtube and wednesday evening on library because i do it first on library good night guys